Hey YouTube, it's time for cameras and coffee. Today's cameras and coffee is brought to you by yours truly because I'm not sponsored. <laughs> That's just a joke. Anyway, the whole point of cameras and coffee is I'm not going to ever let them go sponsored. Uh, there's been comments about how uh, I'm begging for donations. Please don't see it that way. These cameras and coffee vlogs will always be, how do they say it? demonetize or whatever the term is i'm not going to turn on the ads on them that's how you say it anyway this is this is the time for just me and you guys you know to to chat about stuff with all that aside what today's is about is i've got several things i've got some viewer photos that were shared with me and i want to share them with you interesting little backstory when I was doing the D200 videos, there was a gentleman who sent me some photos. They're kind of related to that video. He got a, his dad had a Nikon, I think it's an F2 or an F3, it's in the picture. He was playing with his D7100 and he photographed it and he shared that with me because I, I have interest in those cameras as well. I really like the F2s, the F3s, well the F4 and the F5 is really nice because it's, you know, like the flagship hot rod film camera but that f2 and f3 they just they're just real nostalgic i just like the way they everything about them he shared these photos with me of let's see here the d200 that his dad had and his old film camera which he still shoots a roll of film a week through he says and a picture of his dad which gives it kind of context and gives it the human factor and i thought i really want to share these photos with you guys they're really nice well done photos too and then i had a gentleman who just went to boston got him some lenses and wanted to take his camera to boston and get some decent photos and he learned a lot about his trip to boston what he basically learned was he took a tour and his main takeaway from that tour was you need wide angle glass for tours because you don't have a lot of time to spend getting telephoto shots tight shots don't because of the constraints of time and place and people and you know you don't have a lot of time oh come on you don't have a lot of time to basically build your shot then you have to figure out how to get nice photos quickly and he learned that if he shot with wide angle glass he was able to get interesting photos that didn't look cluttered or didn't look like they were just snapshots. It gave him, he wound up, he took uh, a really nice little zoom lens and the 51.8 prime and he shot a whole bunch of photos and he shared four of them with me and that's these. And as you can see from the photos, he got really interesting shots. I took a tour of Boston as well, and I don't remember the places that he went. Well, most of them. But you know, his perspective was different. Because of the perspective, it, gave, it, gives, you a, it gives you a unique look at the photos. I thought they were very interesting. I wanted to share them with you guys. Here comes August. Must be about time for photography class for the kids. But the next thing I got is I bought this. This is a Photo Deox, I think they call it the ND Throttle, yeah that's what it's called. It's an ND filter built into a Fuji X to Nikon F mount adapter. They got a pretty nice packaging. Yeah, here we go. I've had it for a little bit, I just haven't, uh oh. Well, can't get the lens cap off. There we go. Yeah, it's got an ND filter in it. I can see it in there. I can get this rear FX cap off. Oh, hold on. There we go. I don't know, it must be just real tight. It popped right off. Now that I got the cap off, as you can see, it's a variable ND. If I hold this up and I run it, it gets, I don't know if you can see through it and see. Yeah, yeah you can see if I stick it up to the camera. And then as I turn this ring, it gets darker. Built into the adapter, now, I can mount 
any one of my Nikkor lenses on my Fuji for landscape. That's why I've got the 28 millimeter. That'd be what I would use it mainly on. But the ND filter's built into the adapter. Dude, that's epic. I'm looking forward to trying this out. That will, this will save me so much space in my camera bag. I have a double handful of filter cases in there for different sizes and all this. Now, what you don't get with this is like gradients. You can't do like, you know, the whole skyline gradient thing. What you'd have to do would be um, bracketing. <sighs> if you bracket them about five stops both ways and shoot them in raw, you know, and you can actually get a landscape that way too, but well, you know, all the real landscape shooters want to use the gradient filter and get it down on the horizon, you know, and get it in one shot. That doesn't give you this. This just cuts off the light. I've been threatening to get one of these for a while. So I'm curious, I'm real curious to see how it does with like vignetting and how it does with like the corner darkness, you know, like these, this ND filter on the GoPro. When I get up to about the one or two dots it don't have them numbered it just has dots around the perimeter to give kind of give you reference once it gets pretty close to the top it starts putting these weird artifacts around the edges it starts making like x's and weird stuff on the frame so you can only go so far with it so i'm curious to see can you go to full th full range adjustment on this one in both directions oh look at that what's that do i don't know there's a switch on it it's a clickless aperture ring. This one's apparently built for video because right here it has a clickless aperture that goes from full to min, min to max. And it doesn't have a long throw to do it, but I noticed it had teeth on it. I didn't really read it carefully. I just thought it was getting an ND throttle, but it's got a clickless aperture ring in it. So you'll have to make sure that your aperture is set correctly, yeah. Or you won't have aperture control on the camera lens. There we go. I got it. Yeah, interesting. I guess there's a mark on it somewhere to let you know. It's got black, oh yeah. They've got a little scale right here that shows minimum aperture to maximum. So yeah, if you set this to minimum, then this one will control the aperture appropriately. It's a well-made adapter too. It looks really good. But yeah, I wanted to share that with you guys. I'm curious to see how that plays out. Let's put this back on, see if we can get it on there without locking it. I think it was put on in the wrong position. Yeah. Yeah, it comes on and off like it should now. <laughs> and then this goes on the front. There we go. So, yeah. Curious to see how that plays out. One other thing. If you, unless you live under a rock, you know about the Panasonic S1H and the super hot rod capabilities it's going to have. I just wonder how many people feel the need to shoot in 6K. I understand that you know technology needs to push forward and push forward and push forward or, or you get stagnant i get that there comes a resolution point when it's like what are you going to do put this on overhead projection or the resolution is getting to the to the point of insanity 6k that's that's a 24 megapixel image you know it's 6000 by 4000 and the camera is a beast it's a huge camera so it's like a full well it is a full frame camera it's built like a large body dslr and they say it's for heat management this apparently it's got an enormous heat sink in it because that to process kit 6k video you got to have a lot of computing power and that produces a lot of heat but it's like at what point do the specs actually not generate any real value I'm not going to shoot in 6K. Processing those files is going to take superior computer power. You're going to have to have a pretty hot rod computer to process those videos. This is going to have tons of memory usage. I mean, that's a huge memory file for just a video. So I don't know what to say about that. That's just enormous videos. So what's y'all's thoughts on the Panasonic S1H? Do you think it's a answer to a question that wasn't asked? Or do you think it's the natural progression of video? Because, you know, like red, red cameras shoot in 5K and 8K and things like that. But those guys, they're doing stuff with that. I guess this camera might be geared towards the semi-professional market. You know? I mean, if they can shoot in 6K with a little compact piece of equipment, 
I guarantee you the film industry is going to buy into it because it, it gives them options. So do you think it's going to be something that kind of takes over? I don't know. It's just interesting. You know, I just think it's interesting, especially with Panasonic bringing it to the table. That's really putting the big three under the gun. They've got to really bring something special. So with that, let me know down below. What do y'all think? Do y'all think these these ND throttles are overpriced? They had you know, Photo Deox had a special going on their website, and I got this. They had a on Instagram. They had a a sale, and then when you went to the web page, you could enter another code, and it got you 10 more percent off. So I wound up getting it for like $50. It was super cheap compared to what it normally goes for. So I'm curious to see how that plays out. And what are y'all thoughts on that Panasonic S1H and that kind of trend? So with that, this is David, the Georgia photographer. And I appreciate you guys watching me drivel on about the photography industry as a whole. I really do appreciate it. And if you like the video, hit that like button. I appreciate it. And we'll talk to y'all later. Y'all take care. Bye-bye.